हेलो स्टूडेंट आई एम प्रोफेसर देवाशीष बोस हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ क्रिमिनोलॉजी एंड फॉरेंसिक साइंस डॉक्टर हरि सिंह गौर विश्वविद्यालय सागर मध्य प्रदेश टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट अ लेक्चर ऑफ बीएससी एस फिफ्थ सेमेस्टर ऑन द यूनिट जनरल आइडिया एंड एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ मेटेलिक पॉइजन पार्ट वन विच हैज़ बीन जॉइंटली प्रिपेयर्ड बाई माई सेल्फ एंड मिस प्रियंका पाधे पी एच डी स्कॉलर अ यू जी सी जी आर एफ एट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ क्रिमिनोलॉजी एंड फॉरेंसिक साइंस डॉक्टर हरि सिंह गौर विश्वविद्यालय सागर लेट स्टार्ट अवर डिस्कशन वाइल टेकिंग अ लुक एट वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न टूडे सो इन मॉड्यूल वन वी विल सी इंट्रोडक्शन टू फॉलोइंग मेटल्स आर्सनिक एंटीमनी बेरियम कैडमियम कॉपर मॉड्यूल टू प्रिलिमिनरी एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ दीज पॉइजन्स मॉड्यूल थ्री confirmatory examination of these poisons module 4 instrumental examination of these metallic poison module 5 forensic importance of metallic poison module 6 case study and finally module 7 will be our conclusion dear student there are lot of metals which are poisonous but some of them shows most toxic effect on an organism let's start our discussion with arsenic as we all know in metallic form it is a non poisonous as it is insoluble in water and does not absorbed by elementary canal until few decades ago arsenic had been a choice of homicidal poison because it is odorless tasteless thus administered easy inorganic compounds of arsenic are arsenic trioxide commonly known as sankhya somalkar it is almost insoluble in water and comes up as a thin layer above water when mixed in nature it is found as an impurity in iron and sulfide ore this is extensively used in dyeing preparation of wallpapers and artificial flowers calico painting and arts it is also used as insecticide for killing of rats In ancient time it has been used by hakims and vaid in treatment of various diseases like skin disorder rheumatism impotence and fevers arsenite the metallic salt are potassium arsenite sodium arsenates these both compounds are very toxic in nature generally used in manufacturing of fly papers weed killers rodenticide fungicides and sheep dip copper Arsenate Paris green was extensively used for coloring artificial flowers wallpapers toys dress articles and sweetmeats but they have been replaced by aniline dyes they are sometimes used as rodenticides also arsenate when arsenic acid combines with metal arsenates are formed the chief arsenates are sodium arsenate and potassium arsenate both of these salts are toxic and are used for homicidal purpose or for killing cattle acute poisoning the acute poisoning symptoms occur within 30 minutes of the exposure first a metallic taste in the mouth and smell of garlic in the breath is observed dry mouth dysphagia severe nausea vomiting colicky abdominal pain and profuse diarrhea bloody diarrhea may also be seen all arsenic compound inhibit sulfadiyl enzyme system which is necessary for cellular oxidation it dilates capillary and cause damages this leads to generalized vasodilation and transfusion of plasma and causes shock intense thirst eyes are sunken the pulse is feeble and irregular sub acute poisoning when a small quantity of arsenic is administered slowly at a repeated interval to cause death it is called a sub acute poisoning the symptoms are coughing and tingling in the throat and first the vomiting purging with abdominal pain the patient complains of severe pain in muscles which are quite tender the death occurs due to failure of respiratory muscle in neo fatal cases paralysis may be seen chronic poisoning chronic poisoning is common among workers in match factories in olden days today however after the advent of safety matches intent of chronic poisonings are rare this type of poisoning usually occurs by inhalation of fumes of phosphorus over a period of time the initial symptoms is toothache 
followed by swelling of jaw, necrosis of gums and secretion of bones in the mandible. This is known as fossy jaw. Fatal dose and fatal period 200 mg to 300 mg and time 2 to 4 hours when large doses are administered. What is the treatment? Vomiting should be induced in the alert patient with acute arsenic ingestion. Gastric lavage may be given with warm water. Activated charcoal with a catheteric may be tried. Dimercaptorol is the chelating agent of choice and is administered intramuscularly. The freshly precipitated hydrated ferric oxide may be administered with the object of forming ferric arsenate, a harmless salt antimony. As you all know, antimony is present as an impurity in many mines ore. Generally, it occurs in the form of oxides and sulfides, mostly used in alloys, foil type metals, plating, battery, ceramic and pigments, safety matrices and ant paste. Antimony has following inorganic compounds, antimony potassium tartrate, antimony trioxide, antimony trichloride, antimony trisulfide and antimony hydride. However, as a metal it is not considered as poisonous, but when inhaled it, the forms of vapor is produced dangerous symptoms. Poisoning due to tartar emetic due to overdose may occur. Accidental poisoning by antimony trichloride is known which is used in arts as a bronzing liquid. The mechanism of poisoning is similar with that of arsenic poison by combining with sulfadiyl enzymes and thus interfering with cell metabolism. Signs and symptoms. Symptoms resemble to arsenic poisoning but appear later than arsenic. Moreover, symptoms include a strong metallic taste, burning sensation in the mouth and esophagus. Constriction of throat following by nausea, vomiting with pain in stomach and abdomen. Vomit may contain bloods in later stage. Respiration is labored. Death occurs by cardiac failure. Treatment. As an antidote, BAL is used. Now we come to another metal, barium. Barium as a metal does not show adverse effect but soluble salts, chlorides and ions are most poisonous. Amongst the salt ions are more poisonous. Poisoning cases are accidental. As salts, barium chloride nitrate used in pyrotechnic, barium carbonate generally used as a rodenticide, barium sulfide for x-ray. Signs and symptoms, severe abdominal pain, nausea, metallic taste, salivation, vomiting, intense thirst, purging, dilation of people, dimness of vision, cramps, tremors, convulsion, collapse and death due to respiratory failure. Salts act as cardiac poison and they also paralyze central nervous system. Cadmium. As you learned, most of the metallic poison are poisonous in the form of their salt, but the condition is different with cadmium. It is poisonous in the form of metal as well as salt. As metal, it is soft, lightweight, white in color, used in welding, electroplating, manufacture of electrodes, control rods in atomic piles. Poisonous may occur from the inhalation of cadmium dust or fumes. In salt form, it is present as cadmium sulfide, generally used in colored glasses, paints, plastics. Signs and symptoms. Increased salivation, nausea, severe vomiting, cramps in the abdomen, diarrhea, collapse but rarely death. Treatment as an antidote, BAL is used. Copper. The copper salt is different from other because they act on the body by precipitating proteins. The following salts of copper are important from medical legal point of view. Copper sulfate. It is commonly known as nilathotha or blue vitriol. The chemical formula of copper sulfate is CuSO4, which is blue crystalline powder freely soluble in water. It is given as an emetic in low dose but causes irritation when given in larger dose. Copper carbonate. It occurs in malachite in nature. It is obtained when carbonate of sodium is added to a solution of copper sulfate. Copper subacetate. It is frequently used in medicine and arts. Acute poisoning. 
Symptoms starts within half an hour after minute consumption. There is severe vomiting, nausea, intense thirst, metallic taste in mouth, burning pain. The vomitic material is blue and green in color and it can be differentiated from bile by addition of ammonium hydroxide. When the color changes to deep blue, jaundice is common. The person dies due to shock. Chronic poisoning. The chronic poisoning is seen in workers in industries where copper dust or fumes are there. Greenish or purple lines on gums, a coppery taste in mouth, nausea, dyspnea, vomiting and diarrhea with colic in abdomen may be seen. Renal damage may be seen. Peripheral neutralis, congestion and ulceration of cornea may be seen. Jaundice would be commonly seen. The hair, urine and sweat may be green in color. Fatal dose and fatal period. 15 grams of copper sulfate is sufficiently to kill a person. Fatal period may be from 1 to 3 days. Treatment, gastric levage should be given immediately. Demulescence like milk or egg white can be given as antidote. The albumin present would form insoluble harmless salt as albuminate of copper. Chelating agents like EDTA with BAL is recommended. With this, as we all know, preliminary examination of metallic poison means screening of metals in the matrix. These methods generally based on color reaction between analyte and reagent. However, these methods are often unreliable because some interference in the sample may also react with reagent and produce color specific for particular metallic poison. There are some color tests for particular metallic poisons. Preliminary examination of arsenic. Ryan's test. Take about 20 ml of concentrated HCl and 100 ml of water taken in a porcelain basin in which a bright copper foil is placed. It is boiled for about half an hour and a control test to see if the copper basin and the acid is free from metal to be tested. Here is arsenic. If the blank is negative, the sample is added and boiled for about an hour. A shining steel grain stain appears in a few minutes which becomes thick gradually. The stained copper strip obtained by Ryan's test is washed continuously with water followed by alcohol and finally with ether to remove the adhered fat if the matrix are biological material. The strip is dried by keeping it between filter paper sheet. After completion of these steps, cut the strips in small pieces of 0.2 mm into 0.2 mm size and taken into Ryan's tube. For microscopical examination, the tube is heated slowly on the flames of spirit lamp. The black deposit on the copper strip vo volatiles and gets deposit on the cooler part of the tube. The tube is cooled and viewed under microscope. Characteristic octahedral crystals of arsenious oxide are seen. Guizet test. In this test, the solution obtained from the wet digestion process is tested for 1 ml of the solution is taken into Guizet apparatus. Two pellets of pure zinc metal are placed into it. Then 5 ml of dilute sulfuric acid is poured over the content. The evolved gas is purified by passing over lead acetate paper to absorb H2S gas and is reacted finally with mercuric chloride test paper. A yellow stain on the test paper indicates the presence of arsenic. Color test for antimony. Ryan's test. This test is performed similar to that of arsenic. A bluish black deposit on the copper strip indicates the presence of antimony. The stained strip after necessary processing as mentioned in arsenic is heated in the Ryan's tube and the sublimate produced is observed under microscope. Characteristic needle shaped crystal of SB2O3 are observed. Marsh test. The same procedure as mentioned in case of arsenic is used. The mirror formed on the sublimation does not give the octahedral crystals which shows Marsh test. 
The same procedure as mentioned in case of arsenic is used. The mirror formed on sublimation does not give the octahedral crystals which shows its distinction from arsenic. Preliminary test for barium. Residue to obtain by dry ashing method is dissolved in 2 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid, boiled and filtered. Flame test. A persistent apple green flame is observed. A portion of the acidified solution is boiled with a few drops of concentrated nitric acid made alkaline with ammonium chloride and ammonium hydroxide solution. Filter and the clear solution is added an excess of ammonium carbonate solution. A white precipitate which dissolves in acetic acid indicates the presence of barium. Preliminary test for cadmium. Test with hydrogen sulphide. Take acetic solution 0.3N with respect to hydrochloric acid of the extract and pass hydrogen sulphide gas through it. It gives a yellow precipitate of it gives a yellow precipitate of cadmium sulphide which is soluble in hydrochloric acid but insoluble in ammonia. Test with potassium cyanide. Take 1 ml of extract in test tube then add potassium cyanide solution drop by drop. A white precipitate is formed which dissolved on adding excess of reagent. Hydrogen gas is passed through it when a yellow precipitate is formed. Preliminary test for copper. Spot test. Two drops of aqueous solution is mixed with two drops of dilute zinc nitrate solution and two drops of mercuric ammonium thiocyanate reagent. Pink to violet colored precipitate is obtained. Test with rubinic acid. The aqueous solution is spotted on a piece of Wattman filter paper number 1, dried, sprayed with rubinic acid and then exposed to ammonia vapor. An olive green colored spot is obtained. Test with benzoxine. With a drop of 5% alcoholic solution of benzoxime and held over ammonia, a greenish coloration indicates copper. Arsenic, Marsh test, quantitative, scanty material like burned body bones, hair and nail peelings containing minute traces of arsenic and for testing the feeble traces of arsenic present in the natural constituent is tissue, the Marsh test appears to be the only reliable technique available apart from instrumental techniques. The test is performed in the solution obtained from the wet digestion process. The solution containing arsenic is the prevalent state is reduced to trivalent state by boiling with pyrogalol solution and sulfurated water. A blank control test by taking dilute sulfuric acid in the cathode and anode chamber of the marsh apparatus by passing a current of approximately 4.5 amperes and 6 volts for 30 minutes. The test solution containing arsenic in the trivalent stage is then poured into the apparatus and the process is repeated for 30 minutes. A mirror of black metallic luxure is observed at the cooler side of the marsh tube. If arsenic is present, for quantitative estimation, the control mirrors of arsenic in the marsh tube are prepared for 0.001, 0.002, 0.006 and 0.008 mg of arsenic trioxide. The mirror obtained with the test solution is compared with these controls and quantity of arsenic is calculated. To confirm that the mirror deposit in the marsh tube is only due to arsenic, but the ends of the tube are sealed after replacing hydrogen with air. The tube is then heated slowly on the flame of spirit lamp by keeping the narrower portion of the tube cooler. The mirror disappears and the octahedral crystals of arsenious trioxide gets deposited on the cooler narrower end of the tube which is heated under the high power of microscope. Barium Determination of barium in viscera 100 ml of extract deposited from acid digestion method is taken in a beaker. After adding a slight excess of hot 1N sulfuric acid, it is heated to boiling slowly and with constant stirring. It is then digested on the steam bath until the precipitate had settled and filtered through 
नंबर फोर विट्रोसोल फिल्टरिंग क्रिसिबल एंड वॉशिंग विथ अ लिटल वॉटर अंटिल द एसिड इज रिमूव एट और टेन वॉशिंग आर यूजली नेसेसरी द क्रिसिबल इज ड्राइड एंड हीटेड इन एन एयर ओवन एट हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड एंड टेन डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड एंड देन इग्नाइटेड इन अ मफल फर्नेस फॉर फिफ्टीन मिनट्स अंटिल कॉन्स्टेंट वेट इज ऑप्टेन्ड द परसेंटेज ऑफ वेरियम इज कैलकुलेटेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ बी एस ओ फोर कॉपर टेस्ट विथ टू डाइक्यूनाइल क्यूपरॉन अ ड्रॉप ऑफ द टेस्ट सोल्यूशन पी एच एफ एफ थ्री इज ट्रीटेड ऑन ए स्पॉट प्लेट विथ सेवरल क्रिस्टल्स ऑफ हाइड्रोक्समाइन हाइड्रोक्लोराइड एंड थ्री ड्रॉप्स ऑफ अ सैचुरेटेड इथेनॉल सोल्यूशन ऑफ क्यूपरॉन अ पर्पल टू पिंक कलर डेवलप्स अकॉर्डिंग टू द अमाउंट ऑफ कॉपर प्रेजेंट लिमिट ऑफ आइडेंटिफिकेशन जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव ग्राम्स ऑफ कॉपर लिमिट ऑफ आइडेंटिफिकेशन जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव ग्राम्स ऑफ कॉपर लिमिट ऑफ डायल्यूशन वन इज टू टेन लैक्स टेस्ट विथ एमोनियम थायोसाइनेट एंड ऑर्थोटोलिडीन और पैराफिनलिन डायमीन अ ड्रॉप ऑफ द रिएजेंट सोल्यूशन इज प्लेस्ड ऑन द फिल्टर पेपर फॉलोड बाई अ ड्रॉप ऑफ द न्यूट्रल और स्लाइटली एसिडिक टेस्ट सोल्यूशन अ लाइट और डार्क ब्लू स्टेन इज फॉर्म्ड अकॉर्डिंग टू द अमाउंट ऑफ कॉपर प्रेजेंट रिएजेंट सोल्यूशन A solution of 0.1 gram of orthotoledine and 0.5 gram of ammonium thiocyanate in 5 ml of acetone. Limit of identification: 0.003 microgram copper in 0.015 ml. Interference: salts of silver, mercury, iron, cerulean, gold, and thallium. Let's focus on instrumental methods. Why we need instrumental methods for identification or examination of metals? We need them because these instrumental methods are considered as most reliable, reproducible, specific, quantitative, and provide quick result to analyst. Different metals have different examination method from different metrics, but sometimes they may be same. Here are some instrumental methods for detection of metallic poisons arsenic estimation of arsenic in blood by uv spectroscopy in this method solution of different concentration is prepared and the absorption of each of the solution is measured using ultraviolet spectrophotometer the the concentration of arsenic in the sample of blood is determined from the curve obtained by plotting the absorption of each of the standard solution against the coarseness against the concentration of arsenic determination of arsenic in urine by atomic absorption spectroscopy make standard solution of arsenic of different concentration then the absorption of each of the standard solution of arsenic is plotted against the concentration of arsenic and the concentration in the unknown sample is known thereafter from the calibration curve plotted non linear energy dispersive x ray fluorescence spectrometry ed xrf the technique finds application in the analysis of metals in soil and sediments and environmental samples of air and water antimony energy dispersive x ray fluorescence spectrometer this technique is useful for detection of metals in soil and environmental samples of an air and water barium this metal can be detected in urine using simple inductive coupled argon plasma atomic emission spectroscopy icp aes cadmium determination of cadmium in blood by atomic absorption spectrometry prepare standard solution of cadmium of different concentration the absorbance of each of the standard solution is plotted against the concentration of cadmium the intercept is reduced to zero by drawing a parallel line through the origin the concentration of cadmium in the sample is read off from the calibration curve they show to be linear in the range of 0 to 0.01 microgram per ml cadmium can be detected in urine blood and tissue samples using inductive coupled using inductively coupled argon plasma atomic emission spectroscopy it can also be detected as an indicator of exposure 
Energy Dispersive X-ray Fluorescence Spectrometry Copper Determination of copper in biological materials by iodometry Spectrometric determination of copper in biological material using diethyl dithiocarbamate Determination of copper in serum and viscera by atomic absorption spectrometry It could also be analyzed in urine sample by inductive coupled argon plasma atomic emission spectroscopy It can also detect copper in blood and tissue sample as indicator of exposure Energy Dispersive X-ray Fluorescence Spectrometry EDXRF So forensic importance of arsenic Accidental case of poisoning sometime occurs due to the mixture of drinks or article of food or from its improper medical use Arsenic is eliminated through urine, fecal material, skin, hair and nails and to some extent through sweat, saliva, bile and milk. After its administration, arsenic appears in urine and fecal material usually from 2 to 8 hours. Arsenic is also excreted into the stomach and intestine after absorption even when administered by channels other than oral. The greatest concentration of arsenic is found in hair and nails. Its deposition in hair may begin in 15 days after administration. Arsenic resists putrefaction to a certain extent. It has been found in minute quantities in several varieties of vegetables and apples because of spraying of fruit trees with arsenic preparation. When arsenic is found is exhumed body, question may creep to our minds as to whether it had been absorbed from the earth that surrounding the body or not. Doubt, samples of earth surrounding the coffin or the body should be preserved for chemical analysis also. Forensic importance of antimony. Analysis of metals in soil and sediments and environmental samples of air and water. Quantitative determination of this metal in clinical samples. It is used as indication of exposure. Forensic importance of barium. Analysis of metals in soils and sediments and environmental samples of air and water. It is also used as indicator of exposure. Forensic importance of cadmium. Analysis of metals in soil and sediments and environmental samples of air and water. Quantitative determination of cadmium in clinical samples. It is also used as indicator of exposure. Forensic importance of copper. Analysis of metal in soil and sediments and environmental samples obtained from air and water. This metal quantitatively can be determined in clinical samples. The copper sulphate is consumed with the purpose of committing suicide. Its strong metallic taste and blue color make it unfit for homicidal purpose. The case study, although old, but a very important one, is taken from Krishnan Vich of Test Book of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. And it deals with the case of very famous personality, Napoleon Bonaparte. Emperor of France from 1804 to 1815 who has been the source of attention of the historian because of the flamboyance and daring exploits and perhaps also because of his tragic demise. On being defeated in legendary battle of Waterloo in 1815, he was exiled to a very remote island of St. Helena a British colony in the Atlantic where he died under a mysterious condition. His death remained speculative until the scientific authenticity was finally established. Some hair from the scalp were procured by Van Velder, a Napoleonic scholar, and handed over to Dr. Antomarich. Hair samples were submitted to neutron activation analysis, revealing fluctuating levels of arsenic throughout the length of the hair ranging from 4.4 to 23 parts per million. Another sample comprising just two strands of scalp hair taken when he was alive 
revealed 16.8 ppm of arsenic in one and 33.3 ppm in the other and demonstrated by graphite furnace atomic absorption spectroscopy the heavy metal laboratory of mayo clinic minnesota usa that one ppm of arsenic in here is the baseline level while any level more than 10 ppm is indicative of significant toxicity may you have acquired a lot of knowledge about metallic poisons which are present around us you also know that maximum metals are non poisonous but salts of these metals are poisonous in nature we have seen preliminary confirmatory and instrumental methods employed for their detection the signs and symptoms shown by these metallic poison and also their forensic importance with all these information here we come to the end of today's lecture do keep in mind what we have discussed today it is time for you all to do some self study this is professor devashish bos signing off if you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge you may log on to our website for mcqs quizzes and lors at www.cec.nic thank you for paying attention till then goodbye